How's it going guys? This is Andros with SickCritic.com. I'm going to be bringing you a video for 10 reasons why you should own a Nintendo Switch Lite. Before I get started, if you feel informed by this video at all by the time it gets to the end, definitely make sure you hit the like button. And if you're new here, subscribe to get more content like this, live streams, and more. And maybe check out SickCritic.com for your gaming news and updates and all gaming needs. But yeah, let's get started. Okay, here is a list of 10 reasons why you should own a Nintendo Switch Lite. Reason number one, portability. No Joy-Cons getting disconnected for any reason. Smaller carrying cases, and the system is a lot smaller, so you can put it in a different bags. Uh, some people actually find their original Switch, its cases, to be a little bulky. Um, I have seen parents uh, walk around with their kids and have to pull this gigantic bag out of their purse or out of whatever bag they're using in order to carry the Switch. And I feel like a smaller system definitely kind of caters to that. It makes it to where they have more space for their own things. They can carry the Switch as well. And for people like me, I usually keep a small Pokemon trainer bag with me and my Switch actually doesn't fit in it in the case. I actually have to put my entire Switch in the bag and hope it doesn't get damaged. So honestly, I feel like if it was a kid or if someone just has a small bag, Portability is definitely one reason to own the Switch Lite. And number two on the list, handheld. Honestly, I feel like it's way better for handheld. The new design is definitely incredibly sleek, and it kind of reminds me of a PS Vita. But either way, I feel like it is a must have. It is absolutely amazing that they made it as small as it is. Its battery life is supposed to be, or at least said to be 33% better. So handheld mode will actually last a hell of a lot longer than it was on the current Switch. And a quick nod to the first point of the video being portability, I've seen a lot of kids use the regular size Switch and it ended up being a little bit too big for their hands. I feel like this smaller one actually might make it a lot easier for a smaller kid, but say the ages of nine and under to actually carry this version of the Switch, not really feel like it's too heavy or strain themselves or reach too far for a button. This seems like it is literally the perfect size for pretty much any age, no matter how old or how young you are. And number three for the list, no Joy-Con drifting or management, well, presumably. Everyone knows about the Joy-Con's woes and the issues that it has with drifting. To my understanding, the drifting is caused by the Bluetooth inside of the Joy-Con. Many people said there is a small part you could take out of the Joy-Con to basically stop it from drifting. Well, with this being said, this can't really have the drift issue if it doesn't have the Bluetooth because the Joy-Con can't be taken off the system. And honestly, for myself, my experience with the Joy-Con has been absolutely fantastic. I have no issues to report, my Joy-Con have never drifted, but with that being said, when I give a Joy-Con to a friend, most of the time they fumble and they drop my Joy-Con, whether it hits the ground or they attempt to try and catch it out of reflex and kick it across the room. Most other people are kind of hard to trust with your Joy-Con. But with that being said, since they're not detachable, it's pretty much up to you to take care of it and no one else can ruin your Joy-Con. So honestly, I feel like the Joy-Con not being detachable is a perfect thing for it. Number four on the list, special edition consoles. Now, as you all know, Nintendo always has a special edition version of the 3DS, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, you name it, their handhelds always had special editions. As listed here, all these beautiful pictures of the Nintendo 3DS systems. I actually own a couple of these, which is hilarious. I'm such a loser. But either way, they usually do this all the time and they're already kicking it off with a Pokemon Sword and Shield one, which uh, I will be trying to get day one. Wish me luck. But yeah, regardless, it's actually really cool to see they're already starting and I look forward to seeing some of the designs they have later on along the line. Number five is the price. $200 is a perfect entry point for somebody just kind of looking to play Breath of the Wild, but they're on a budget. Also, I have plenty of friends and we have plenty of subscribers that actually don't have a Switch yet and would like to have the Switch. Honestly, that $200 alone is already pretty tempting there. And with that being said, some people haven't dove into the Switch yet just because they can't really spend $300. And some people have actually looked into this and said, you know, $200 isn't that bad. I guess that $100 difference before tax is pretty appealing. And also, a hilarious side note, $200 is how much a new 2DS and new 3DS XL costs. So definitely think about that price point. 
that's pretty much them wiping the 3DS off the market by making this system the same price it would be to get a new one. Number six, the D-pad. I myself have modded my Joy-Con and added a D-pad to it, so it's nice to see that Nintendo has actually made one on the system by default. Plenty of people, including myself, that play retro games, fighting games, and side-scrollers like Mega Man will love to see this option to play with the D-pad. You know I personally do. I'm a huge fighting game fanatic and you guys know I love retro games. So seeing that D-pad there and knowing I don't have to modify my console definitely makes me excited. Number seven on the list, portable only. Now this might be kind of an odd one and including myself into this, I'm a little bit of a loser, but you know, being a loser is kind of cool sometimes, you know, <laughs> I'm sure you could agree with me. But regardless, it is an odd one, but it being portable only is a good thing. Back to pretty much talking about myself, I personally know a lot of people that do not play the Switch docked in any form. Matter of fact, a lot of people subscribed to this channel right here, right now, don't even use their Switch docked as well. Everybody pretty much plays in handheld mode for the most part, at least as far as I know. But with that being said, unless people are charging the system, there really is no reason to dock your system if you don't play in TV mode. My girlfriend and Rebecca, I'm sure you all know Rebecca, she and both of them typically only play in handheld mode. I'm not sure how many people out there are like that, but at least the small circle of people that I know do this. So I would assume there are a lot more people out there in the world that pretty much don't dock their system unless they're charging. And honestly, there's actually a lot of people out there that don't play console games. I know in a lot of Asian countries, people really enjoy doing handheld and Regardless, there's just a lot of people that don't do consoles. They either do PC and then they have a 3DS on the side. This is pretty much that opportunity for people to dive into the Switch for a cheaper price range and basically replace their 3DS. Number eight. Now, number eight pertains to those people that do play home consoles. Now, with that being said, it's basically stating if you already own a Switch, now you can have a Switch that stays at home and then you can have a Switch that goes with you. You don't have to worry about your Switch being damaged because you have one that stays at home docked. And then you have the one that goes with you at all times. And that's pretty much your main Switch when you're out of the house. That way you have a regular dedicated home console and one that you can take on the go and still share the same data. This is something that I do. Uh, many of you guys know that I have two Nintendo Switch systems. One Switch stays at home docked at all times, has my local multiplayer games on it. So for when friends come over, we can play stuff together. My personal Switch, I take with me everywhere and it only has a single player experience. But that's pretty much what I do and I feel like there may be someone else out there that does the same thing. But personally, I like the idea of the Switch Mini just because of that. Now I can have a smaller portable dedicated version for myself and I can leave my regular Switch at home for multiplayer and I don't have to interconnect either one. Everything can stay their own entity. Which in a way makes me kind of a loser because I have two Switches. but. A. You know how it is. Number nine. Now this one's really, really short, but it's short and sweet and makes a lot of sense. Less peripherals. No dock, no Joy-Con, no straps, no grips, no Pro Controllers, no Pokeball Plus, no kickstand. Getting lost. I'm sure you can catch my drift. All you need is the Switch Lite, the charger, and a micro SD card and you are good to go. Nothing extra to get. Technically, I guess you would need a carrying case. But other than those things, Switch Lite is actually a lot cheaper than having a regular Switch, mainly because you're buying it for yourself and only yourself. And the last thing on the list, number 10, it is great for kids. It reminds me a lot of the 2DS when that first came out. It was weird looking, most people rejected it, but it wasn't for them, it wasn't made for them. It was actually made for kids. Not that I'm saying this is made for kids, but at the same time, it is a cheaper way to get kids up to date with gaming if you have kids of your own or if you know other kids that want to play newer games and their parents keep buying them things like an original Xbox or a Wii, they could totally get up to date by getting, you know, a Switch Lite. Most kids have a 3DS of some sort or 2DS, so this will be a huge and major upgrade for them. And they don't have to worry about losing their Joy-Con or breaking their Joy-Con. I know many sick critic subscribers lost their Joy-Con for days at a time, and honestly, Switch Lite would literally solve that issue. 
And that meets the end of this video. If you guys felt informed at all, definitely make sure you hit the like button. And I do appreciate you guys clicking on this video. You are all my friends and I really appreciate you taking time out of your day to take a look at my thoughts on why people should have a Nintendo Switch Lite. If you felt informed or if you at least enjoyed yourself and you're new here, definitely make sure you subscribe and check out sickcritic.com for gaming news, updates, and pretty much anything gaming related. I'll catch you guys later on the next video.